Hi, today I'm going to be talking about medicinal chemistry and drug discovery. So, what is a drug? In a medical setting, a drug is any chemical that can be used for the treatment and cure of disease, um, either the pain of patients, or anything that provides other benefits. That can include your vitamins and minerals, um, or that kind of tablets. And another use of the term refers to any substance which people can become addicted to. This ranges from things like caffeine and tea and coffee, uh, which are mild stimulants to drugs such as cocaine, heroin, etc. So, where do they come from? Um, drugs are often natural products that are then refined to lower the side effects in toxicity. So, toxicity is your LD50 because you want to not increase how much drug you can give before it kills them, the patient so has to make it more, well, make it safer. And lower side effects speak to itself. No one wants to have side effects which will be able to do what you want. And also make it more potent to allow for stronger therapeutic effects. So make it better at its job while lowering its toxicity and its side effects. That are the main drug aims of the drug. Now, commonly you'll get them from plants and microbes such as fungi and bacteria. Drugs can also be derived from animal products. Also, they can be sourced from other industries as synthetic chemicals that you wouldn't really expect to be in, um, well, be used as drugs. A few examples here. You've got your yeah, aspirin, comes from it's your acetyl salicylic acid. So you can see that. That comes from willow bark originally. It's quite easy to synthesize now. Um, Prontosil, that's actually from the dye industry. It's a, one of the first recognised antibiotics and is an azo dye. Tetracycline comes from Streptomyces and is an effective antibiotic. And disulfuran it is a drug that used to be used in the treatment of alcoholics. And it's, it's found that it was used originally in the rubber industry and it was found that people in the rubber industry used to get horrible hangovers. And that was down to this chemical because it, it messes up the metabolism of alcohol and causes a major hangover. So this is given was given to alcoholics. They stopped using it as much now because they've just stopped taking the tablets to avoid the hangover. But it would mean that they would get a large hangover if they took any alcohol in, so it would encourage them not to drink. So what are the two main routes to finding new drugs? Um, we have we've got random screening, which is your assays. Basically, the drug companies have massive libraries of chemicals, and they just test them against enzyme assays and things like that to see what has any effect on anything. Normally, these drugs are selected. It's not completely random screening. If they know that something looks about right, they'll probably try that before the random chemical. Um, rational design. This this is an up and coming area of drug discovery. It's not very commonly used at the moment, but if you know a receptor site or an active site of the, what you're aiming the drug to bind to, you can work backwards from there to design the drug in computer programming to design a drug that is perfect for that receptor site. So far, I don't think there's been any drugs on the market currently that have uh, been designed this way. I think there's a few in clinical trials though. So, how do we find drugs and get them to the market? There's six main stages in drug development. Your discovery and your lead development and your preclinical testing. So, discovery is what I mentioned before. Lead development, I'll probably mention in the next video, is how to make a drug better than what it does. Your preclinical testing is your toxicity, your pharmacology, all that kind of thing. Phase 1, 2, and 3 are all clinical phases when the drug's going to be used in humans to check to see if the market. And phase four happens after market release and that's combined from doctors reporting back to the pharmaceutical company. Any side effects you find that haven't been found in the previous phases. Obviously these three phases have much smaller um, sample size than phase four because after market release you've got much much more people taking the drug so you can find rare side effects much easier. And as I said, I uh, mentioned lead development probably in the next video. It's, so thank you for listening and I uh, appreciate your time.